Hello everybody, it's Brian here in Toronto where it is unfortunately cold and rainy. I am planning to go out later, so hopefully it stops or maybe I'll change my mind. We'll see how it goes. Earlier today I was watching a video from Logan. His channel is Broke on Records. Um, maybe you know it. He was showing some 10-inch records, uh, but in, in the mix he also showed a couple of records that had a shape to them, like a form. And it did remind me that I wanted to, at some point, do a video of all of my picture discs, uh, some of which, or a couple of which, have a shape to them. So this is what I'm going to do today. The good news is I don't have a ton of picture discs because they're not something I typically seek out, although clearly I bought these for whatever reason. So hopefully this won't take too long. Let's talk about... Uh, picture discs. Now most of them come in this um, funny thick PVC, I guess it's PVC sleeve and these are purported to off gas and ruin your record. So in actual fact I should be listening to some of these to see if they sound good. I mean that's aside from the point that picture discs are or have been notorious for having bad sound. I think they're better now but I, I try not to buy them. I, the recent uh, Cure is a good example. They did some reissues where they were only available on picture discs for a while, and then they put out a black album version. I never bought those picture discs. I just waited because I assumed they were going to sound terrible. But maybe they don't. Anyway, the first one says $20. I didn't pay $20 for this. I probably paid $2. And it is from Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Sung by... It doesn't say Frankie Goes to Hollywood on the cover here. It says, Sung by Holly Johnson. Best listened to by lovers and that repeating graphic there if you flip it over it's not lined up it should be like this right come on there's the band it does say frankie goes to hollywood in the credits on each side so side a is a nine and a half minute version of the power of love side two is kind of an interesting mix it has the world is my oyster there's a scrapped version and a trapped version they're interspersed between parts one and parts two of holier than thou and then it rounds it out with a instrumental version of the power of love so i have listened to this several times but a long time ago whenever i got it I haven't listened to it recently it's kind of an interesting looking record i'm going to assume that all of these picture discs are limited edition i mean why would they redo them who knows but anyway that's an interesting one Second one is from Kate Bush. This is Rubber Band Girl from 1993, taken from the album The Red Shoes, which is probably my least favorite Kate Bush record. Something about that record didn't sit well with me, but I will say that the uh, Rubber Band Girl is probably the best track on the album, in my opinion. So it comes with this card. This is... Uh, the image rubber band girl and then the back shows you that we have the extended mix of rubber band girl the album mix and plus big stripey lie which is actually an okay track uh, the very the, the, this has a very dancey theme dance theme on this record i don't know why it says manufacturer's property not for sale who knows i don't think this is not a promo so that's kind of weird and then the actual record itself exactly like that card that was in there rubber band girl on this image here and then the B-sides listed back here. Same, same thing. But yeah, but a pretty good song. I really like that song. Although the album, even with Prince on one track, didn't really speak to me very much. This is Bauhaus. So you might be able to read on top. Burning from the inside. Their fourth record from 83, if I'm not wrong. And the back has the detail from the original album. It's in a die-cut sleeve, so you'll see... Just the cutout there and the actual record looks like this and I, I think it looks a bit faded to me or discolored but you can still read Bauhaus at the top and burning from the inside but it just looks a bit like it's lost some of the color. Side 2 has images of the band. I've never listened to this because I have the original Canadian pressing of this album plus later I got the expanded compact disc. But I suppose, as with all these, I should listen to them to see how they sound, but there's never been a need. But it's kind of a cool thing to have, especially for Bauhaus fans. Alright, so now let's move on to... Let me show you the hype sticker first. This is... OMD Orchestral, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark Access All Areas, which looks like this. Picture of Andy McCluskey on the front. On the back, we have a track listing. 
So in 2015, they released this live recording on DVD and compact disc. So you could either watch it or just listen to it. And then the year later in 2016, it was released on this picture disc. I think those are the only versions. There may be a tape version. Uh, but uh, the funny thing is this is a recording from 1980, which I guess they sort of found or stumbled upon. So when you see the track listing, it's very much of the first two records. So we have Messages, Mr. Reality, Bunker Soldiers, Motion and Heart, Red Frame, White Light, Enola Gay, and Electricity. So very much the first two records. And it's actually really good, if you want my opinion. Very early OMD. And then another... OMD thing. I'll show you the hype, st hype sticker here. So this is Dazzle Ships at the Museum of Liverpool. And this image, by the way, which I'll show you again, is a engine room detail from the Edmund Gardner, Gardner Pilot Cutter, courtesy of the National... Or sorry, the National Museum's Liverpool. So I have to say, this is a really good uh, image, I think, because it suits a record because it's round. It's a, a pressure gauge. I think is really cool. It says salt water on there. Zero pressure right now, which I, I don't know, is that good or bad? The back has just this um, bluish design. There's no track listing here. It's essentially Dazzle Ships, but it does have four segments of Dazzle Ships that were recorded way back then in 1983, but never included. So this is the only official recording or release where you can find what are the parts parts one two four five or one three four five or something like that those parts are only on here even when they repressed dazzle ships and ex expanded the format they didn't include those for some reason so it was just kind of weird that came out like three or four years ago there's another one that just came in this plain heavy plastic sleeve devo butch devo and the sundance gig this was recorded in 1996 at the Sundance Film Festival. Interesting street scene there with a vehicle and uh, a night shot of uh, cars and people and lights. The back has a more distressing image, a more disturbing image. So this was recorded in 1996. I, I'm not sure if it was released back then. This is a 2014 Record Store Day issue, so it may have been released back then. I think there was a video of it as well. And it has pretty much what you'd expect from a, a Devo show uh, with tracks like, you know, Uncontrollable Urge, Mongoloid, <laughs> Jacko Homo, what else? Jerking Back and Forth, Girl You Want, and Whip It, of course. So I think this is really cool. Here's something from Gary Newman, uh, a collection of unreleased recordings, special edition picture disc, Gary Newman Two-Way Army, it's called The Plan, but it has 1978 listed there because these were recorded in 1978. And unlike the other picture discs, this one is in a cardboard sleeve, so they, they say picture disc, but usually they put them in plastic so you can see what you're getting. So there is a statement from Gary on the back here, which is quite interesting, uh, because in the early days they were a little, little bit more punky than they became. So he says, these songs were recorded in the early part of 1978. The intention was not to release them in this form, if at all, but to give the record company a rough idea of the songs we had at the time. I wrote the, he puts punky in quotes, I wrote the punky songs with the sole intention of obtaining a record contract. It seemed at the time that contracts flowed like water for this kind of music. I soon found out that it wasn't quite that easy, but did eventually manage to sign a deal with Beggar's Banquet. Uh, it is interesting to me to see how some of these songs or parts of them have developed into others that are today quite well known, and how the transition from guitar to synthesizer began. I'd forgotten that I'd even written half of these, so that's kind of cool. So inside we have the picture disc itself, and it's quite interesting because when you look at it, if you look at it quickly, you're going to see these images and think of Gary from a later time. In fact, if you look at, at the other side, you're going to think this is the cover of the Replicas album, and it almost is. It looks like an outtake from that because he's looking in the wrong direction in the cover of, of Replicas. He's looking towards the window, and here he's looking towards the camera. So it's 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 like an outtake from, I guess it's an outtake from that photo shoot, which is kind of cool, right? Although this suggests a different time. That album was far more, well, it was electronic, really. So it's funny they used that, but I guess I see the point. So that's a cool record. And then we have this one. From Gary, another Gary Newman one. This is a 12-inch single for, from the Strange Charm album, Survival, with This Is Love. And that's a kind of 
stark thing because it has this bold white lettering on the on the vinyl plus this giant picture in the middle and on the flip side we have this blow up of Gary looking rather dapper there so that's kind of interesting so this is I think this is 86 45 rpm possibly anyway I've never played this because I have a different 12 inch single for the same release that is not a picture disc so I never bothered here's a very uh, beat up record <laughs> I have this is Elvis Presley, A Legendary Performer, Volume 3. This came in that box of free records I mentioned a while back with writing on this, on this uh, cover here. Limited edition picture disc includes eight previously unavailable performances and an exclusive interview with Elvis and the Colonel. Here's the back, and again, someone wrote all over it. So I'm not an Elvis person. I couldn't even tell you anything about these tracks. Uh, I mean, really... I don't even know if I know, oh, I know In the Ghetto. I don't even know if I know any of the other. <laughs> Crying in the Chapel, yes, I know that one. So, anyway, I've never played this because it's in pretty rough shape. I got rid of most of those records that came in the that box, but I kept this one because it was kind of unusual. I don't think it's worth anything, but you can see, you might not be able to see, but it's kind of dirty and has lots of surface scratches and uh, maybe even deeper than surface scratches. So I've never, I never bothered to play it. I, I may not even keep it, but I just have it right now. And then, oh, I didn't take the sticky thing off this. This is from one of my favorite bands. This is The The, The Dogs of Lust, including The Violence of Truth, a remix version, and a live version of Infected. This is the back of the case. Uh, all tracks feature Johnny Marr. So this is a die cut, so you'll see that there's um, the record just slips in there. I should probably put it in a sleeve. You can see the images repeated there. Dogs of Lust, the, the, and the flip side. And I do remember where I bought this. I even remember the store. It was in Baltimore in the year 2020. I went to Baltimore for work just when the pandemic was becoming a problem, or just when it was announced that it was a pandemic, or right around the time. I mean, anyway, anyway, it was around the time that no one should have been traveling. I have a crazy story about traveling and how uh, it was just insane. So <laughs> that was funny. Now, um, here is an interesting one from Bruce Springsteen, but this is an unofficial release. So it's, it's Interview with Bruce Springsteen, limited edition, 5,000 copies made in England with this kind of nice photo of Bruce and Clarence on the front. And it's unofficial, so you can't even find it. It's on Discogs, but it doesn't tell you anything about the value of it. Here's the flip side. I do remember where I bought this, can't remember what I paid. And I've never listened to it. Now, isn't that weird? I just never never got around to listening to it. I suppose I should listen to all of these because many of them have this thick plastic which may transfer surface noise or provide some ghosting on the album, but we'll see. I should play them. Another item from Bruce Springsteen. This is sort of what led me here. I was seeing Logan's shaped picture discs and I ended up pulling this one out. Um, this is also an interview with Bruce Springsteen. Limited edition, 5,000 copies made in England. But this image seems to be reversed because Harley Davidson is backwards here, so maybe it's a mirror image. And uh, the store where I bought it from said, rare collector's item, limited edition, shaped picture disc, and then again, limited edition, 5,000 copies, and 20. I think it was $20. I don't know if I paid $20 for it. So I, it's been stapled to this piece of cardboard. And uh, I've never taken it out, out of the cardboard, and I've never even really looked at the back. Although I'm sure it's just the other side of the motorcycle. Uh, weird. But it still looks to be in good shape. <laughs> but I'll never know unless I take it out, which I probably should do. But it's been in there since probably, probably 38 or 40 years. It's probably been in this plastic. <laughs> and lastly, a very interesting one from Bruce Springsteen as well. This is a shaped seven inch single for dancing in the dark. And you may already detect that there's something wrong with the color here because the flip side is pink Cadillac and that Cadillac does not look pink. In fact, it's even hard to see Bruce Springsteen there, but that's side A. Side B is what side A used to look like. It used to look like this, <laughs> but somehow over the years, uh, I don't know, again, I don't know if it's from this, this sleeve that it's in. Somehow one side of this became uh, discolored. I once saw a listing for this somewhere. They referred to it as being tea stained. 
which you know looks like someone spilled tea on here but for some reason side two does not have that issue so it's pretty strange this came out in 1984 so dancing in the dark and pink cadillac so weird right i'm gonna play this since this one is in my hands last and see what it sounds like and uh see if it's got any surface noise uh on it anyway thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video